Hi everyone, this is Sue again from Think Forensic. Today we're going to be having a chat with Diane Hall about forensic linguistics. So, can we start off by telling us what forensic linguistics is? Yeah, sure. So forensic linguistics um, is the study of text in a criminal situation that could cover quite a few things and um, that could cover things like um, writing of a, a ransom note, a suicide letter, uh, intent of hate or crime through social media. Um, quite a lot of things really, wherever text is included um, in obviously the proceeds of a crime or how a crime has panned out, anything that's written that is forensic linguistics. It can also cover audio recordings, but obviously um, that's a, a slightly different part of forensic linguistics. That's forensic transcription um, and forensic audio. There's a lot of different disciplines that come under that, that banner. So how do you get into that as a career? So there could be a few ways that you can get into that. You could obviously take the traditional route through the police um, and, and as a police officer specialise in a discipline, maybe do in-house training on forensic linguistics. There are uni degree courses that you can do, um, certainly in English language and linguistics that could be a stepping stone into the forensics field because um, it's the breaking down of text. So that would be a really viable route to do that as well. And there are also specific um, uh, courses through through distance learning that you could, could learn it as well. Um, through I, I learned with the Forensic Institute, so the private bodies that will give you that uh, qualification as well. Excellent, thank you. Can you give us some examples about how uh, forensic audio can be used or some scenarios of crimes where it can be used? So audio comes into uh, play obviously in something like a 999 call or um, if sound has been captured somewhere, somebody might on, in their alibi claim that they're not at a crime scene or that they haven't been part of um, a crime, but someone who works on, on audio, if there's been some sound captured anywhere, um, could actually disprove that um, and, and prove that actually that person was at the scene after all. Um, obviously with 999 calls, they're recorded automatically, so um, something like that can actually be quite a uh, a fruitful um, place to get a lot of information about the crime. It's it's usually done uh, as the crime is happening. Um, it can be difficult for a forensic audio um, specialist because there's a lot of heightened emotion in, in play, but um, transcribing the 999 call can give you a lot more clues than the words that's just been said. Yeah. So it's not just the words that's being said, it's the background noises as well that can be of use. It can be anything, yeah. Certainly um, the background noises can prove, as you say, whether people are at the scene or not, because, um, you know, if, if, if someone is speaking in the background, it doesn't mean to say that they're not being captured or that the that can't be used in evidence. Um, but, yeah, certainly forensic audio can give you even more clues than just looking at the text on a piece of paper because it can give you context to what people have said. It can uh, give you tone. It can maybe give meaning and interpretation a bit more clout than if you're just reading it. Uh, blank on a piece of paper. So, um, so forensic audio can enrich um, an, an actual written piece of text. If you've got audio to go with it as well, you've got sort of a, a double whammy there of trying to interpret what somebody is meaning in that call. With um, the written text, what sort of offences are we looking at with, with that? So it could be a, a lot of different things. So you could um, look at someone leaving a ransom note, someone who's maybe leaving a suicide note. Is it someone, the person who's committed suicide, have they actually written it? Um, it could be death threats, written death threats po posted through somebody's letterbox. It could be um, hate mail or, or intentions to harm through um, a posting on social media. Uh, I mean, it, th there's even been cases of people um, defrauding wills um, and, you know, uh, using uh, other people's writing to, to sort of deflect money into their own account rather than the person who, who intended it to, to go to. So, so there's loads of different uh, examples. Um, the more common ones are probably what I've suggested, but it, it's anywhere that there's text within a crime. Can it give us a clue as to the, a person's identity then? 
It can do, yeah. There's a lot of clues in in the the words that people use. Um, for example, some people might have um, a writing style that's very abrupt and very forthright um, in the way that they write. Some other people, uh, you might know that that use very flowery language, long words. They might say, uh, take eleven words to say what could be said in three. Um, so these things are actually like um. A, a linguistic imprint um, of just as much as your signature of you as a person and also the things that you use might be colloquialism so they might affect where um suggest where you are regionally um if you're using words that are a slang or of local knowledge rather than national knowledge um, so yeah yeah you could get quite um a good view of the, of the person depending on the amount of text obviously the more text you have the more clues you can pick up about the person who's written it. Uh, but one thing that I will specify, with forensic linguists, it's all open to interpretation. The only person who ever knows with written text what is meant is the person who's written it. The person who's reading it is only assuming or interpreting what they think is meant. So it can give us a mini profile of an offender then? It can, be, it can be used in, in profiling, certainly it's uh, it has been used in that, that way. If, um, there's been a few cases where there's been no knowledge from the police that a crime has been committed until a note, a ransom note has turned up um, at their door and they've had no other clues to go on, nothing at all, nobody has shown up and, and that's all that they've had is this written communication between the perpetrator and themselves. So it's the the linguist has, has obviously helped in that um, instance to try and pick as many clues and as many uh, leads to investigate from that written text as possible. That's great. Can it be used as proof then in court uh, as to authorship? It can help. It can certainly, um, a linguist could be able to, without a shadow of doubt, prove that someone has written a piece of text maybe along the lines of, of a handwriting expert where they could show two pieces of text by the same person and show uh, correlations that are probably uh, amount to it being very very likely that this person has written it um to be perfectly honest i don't think forensic linguistics is an absolute tool um that uh, a whole case would hinge on just because so much is open to interpretation and to be fair people could copy a handwriting style as much as someone could copy a linguistic style as well so um so i don't i don't think it's something that's um a be all and end all in a in a um police case but it certainly can help um to support other areas of evidence right so you need other evidence to back it up i would say yeah Besides written and audio um, transcriptions like 999 calls, can it be used for any other purpose? Yeah, I mean, certainly in copyright law, um, forensic linguistics can be quite useful. So there was the case with Dan Brown. He went to court about um, his uh, book, Da Vinci Code, um, and he was sued by a couple of other authors who claimed that he'd taken the, the book from, from theirs, that he'd, he'd lifted the, the story, um, the plot, and, and actually just embellished it for his own book. So that was quite a famous case. But from a copyright point of view, there's also music, um, implications there's some court cases um there's quite a few actually going back over time where some artists have uh sampled maybe intentionally other people's other artists um audio in their own songs some have claimed to have done it accidentally and that it's been a you know just a coincidence that their song sounds so much like the original um, but there are um quite a few cases where um, plagiarism or copyright has required a forensic linguist or an audio specialist to determine who's, who's case or who's, who's right or wrong. So that doesn't just apply to the lyrics then? No, no, not at all. It can apply to the, the actual rhythm and the, the um, music instruments that have been used on a track. Um, the pace of a song, that's uh, forensic musicology, but certainly it's very close to linguistics because um, whereas, as you say, lyrics are probably the linguistics view of how things might be similar um, on an audio basis, a musicologist, musicologist would look at the uh, the song, they break it down into little, in, you know, little 
parts of it wouldn't necessarily be the overall it could even just be little sections of the song that could be um under review but yeah it's um they're very closely linked and they probably use a lot of the same disciplines to break down the text or the audio in question but that's a separate discipline so it's a fantastic subject really really interesting i suppose nowadays uh, we have to give more consideration to what we post on social media Definitely. While 15 years ago, a forensic linguist might not even have um, had to deal with social media uh, posts, that is something that, that actually would probably be common in their work nowadays. Something that you post online could be subject under hate laws, just as much as something that's written in a letter. Um, something that you've sent as a text on your phone um, could be deemed threatening and, and also could um, have linguistic value in that if there's a, a stream of it that's part of a court case. But yeah, I think social media is something that people sit, might sit at home and they're, they're on a screen or they're, they're just in front of a keyboard and they might not realise that what they're posting online could be subject to uh, to a police case if, if there's uh, criminal activity that could be deemed from it.